What's going on, owners and operators? It's your host, Austin Gray. Welcome back to another episode of the Owner Ops Podcast. Thanks again for listening. I really do appreciate the support from all of you as listeners. It's kind of crazy. We started this podcast last year about this time. And the reason was because I was bored during the wintertime. We did not offer snow removal services. My plan was work directly with my partner, sort of like understand how to operate the snow removal business before jumping in head first. We had had a good year, first year last year in the land clearing forestry dirt side of the business in the summer. My plan was to stay small at that point, stay really light on expenses, go market about three hours away from us down on the front range, like outside of Denver. I knew that I could use our marketing skills and our marketing team, run some paid ads and go get some forestry jobs down there. And so that's what we did. Uh, we did about, I don't know, one or two jobs a month down there, barely broke even, but I paid for my equipment, you know, kept the bills paid here personally. Now we've since grown. Part of this episode, I'm going to talk about building the snow removal business because this year we are bringing on snow services. And I want to talk about the thought process behind that, why we are choosing to bring on snow services and why we are not focusing time on marketing on the front range for this year, at least for our crew here in Winter Park. So if you listen to this full episode, I'll dive into my thought process from year one going into winter versus year two going into winter and why the differences are there. Secondly, we will jump into our approach to building the snow removal business um, all the way from like, how are we getting the customers? How are we marketing? How are we selling? How are we pricing? You know, what is like the revenue projections? And we'll dive into all that in the episode. So if you are a contractor in an area where you are offering summer side of the business, either in trees or in dirt, and you have snow in the winter, then this episode is going to be for you. The other people who will be interested in this episode is people who reach out either on YouTube, Twitter, or through this podcast where you're just like, hey man, I just want to start the business. Like, how do I start? And the reality is like, you just got to start. I will tell you right now, like it's not all peaches and roses starting a business. Everybody thinks it's like, oh, I'm going to get to work on my own time. I get to work less. I get freedom. It's like, nah, it's a bunch of bull crap. I've never worked more in my life. I was literally up at 2.15 a.m. this morning because I feel like I'm backed up and I have so much to do. Now, some of that's self-inflicted, right? I've decided to create a podcast all while building a business at the same time. I'd be lying to you if I said like I didn't love what I do. I absolutely love it. I love challenging things. I love the grind. And at the end of the day, it's like, dude, I'm, uh, I'm doing a podcast. It's not like I'm like waking up. I mean, like people have way harder jobs. You know what I mean? It's like, like I get to do this. I'm very thankful. It's time to dig, baby, dig. I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, I'm excited. I'm, I'm optimistic about growth. Trump even mentioned in his podcast with Joe Rogan, go back and listen to that if you haven't. There was a little plug about wildfire mitigation in there, which pretty excited because we, like he mentions the problem that America has, you know, dead wood littered across the forest and it needs to be cleaned up. And guess what? We offer that service here at Bear Claw, so I'm excited about that. If you're a land clearing, excavation, grading, or snow removal contractor, check out landservicemarketers.com. LSM is the same growth agency I've used to grow Bear Claw land services from zero to over seven figures of revenue. We've created a seamless process for owner operators to upload photos and videos from the field and LSM will do all the heavy lifting for you on the back end. They'll do all the editing, all of the publishing, all the social media management, and they'll run your paid ads to bring you more leads so that you can close more high ticket jobs. Check out landservicemarketers.com. If you are listening to this and you want to start a business, sometimes you just got to start, you got to jump off and you just got to do it. I'm back at square one with the snow removal business. I feel like we've gone balls to the wall for the last two years building this business to build up the forestry and dirt side of Bear Claw. And then now here we are, it's November 12th. And last week we had our first snow event. And so we had plows on the ground and we had four crews shoveling vacation rental properties. Had about 105 properties right now on the shoveling for shoveling crews. And then we've got a little less than 25. I think we're at 22 residential snowplow counts as of right now. So let's dive into that. Okay, first I told you we were gonna start about the strategy last year. Last year, my approach was to market forestry jobs. And the reason was is because I had already bought about half a million bucks of equipment and signed my name on the dotted line. And I knew that that equipment had to be paid for. So the reality is I bought a skid steer with a mulching head. I bought a mini excavator and I bought a track chipper all last year. And we had a good year last year and I had enough cash saved up 
to where worst case scenario, like I knew we were going to get through the winter, but I also made a decision to keep our office manager on through the winter because she had done such a good job for us. And I knew that like she could help in other ways. So actually whenever she was involved, like she helped build the initial community for owner ops. We were trying some things on school. We were trying, I don't even remember what we did. We, we tried like a Slack group, things like that. Anyways, long story short, like the building blocks of the podcast were started last year. And it was because, well, one, I was a little bored because we weren't working every day, like out in the field. I would travel down to the front range of Denver and do the forestry jobs. And then Josh, who's now my business partner, you know, was going down there as well. And we were banging out these forestry jobs or these fire mitigation jobs down on the front range. Well, looking back at the numbers, it's like, man, we barely broke even on that. And that was just like pain in the ass to drive down to Denver three hours. It ended up being three hours because it's like some days were like snowy on the pass. And long story short, we came out of last year just saying, you know what? I would rather live and work here. And I would rather have that option for our guys. So if you live and you, and you work in our ski town, we wanted to provide services and job opportunities. Uh, where they could live and work here and stay in their own bed. They're not have, we're not having to get like hotels and stuff for them traveling. So this year, the plan was let's go build a snow removal business. So that leads us to this year, build a snow removal business. Like so many people have told me not to do it. It's like, why are you doing that? And I'll tell you why. One, it's because most people don't want to do it. Therefore, there's opportunity there. Snow screams opportunity in my mind. And the reason being is because the major competitors in most of our markets, go check it out. It's like, at least in my market, the two biggest players are in their mid sixties. And guess what? Time is not on their side. It's just the harsh reality. I know one guy better than I know the other. I have respect for both of them and the business that they've built, but I wanted to position myself as the preferred acquisition for whenever they're ready to retire. Right. So I've already put the seed in both of their ears that you guys let me know when you're ready to retire and we'll talk about buying your business. And what I mean by that is like, I'll buy your recurring accounts. So I'm going to put a new fleet of equipment so that we can go recruit top notch operators for these jobs. Much easier said than done. Right. I've been working this plan for the last three years. Before I ever started Bear Claw, I approached a snow plowing business owner here and I told him, interested in buying your business. I know you're on your way out. I know you're at retirement age. At the time, I think I was approaching 30 and I was like, I got like 30 years left in me, maybe 40, maybe 50, who knows? Knock on wood, right? Every, every day is a blessing. What I do know is time and energy, if you look at the statistics, is on my side. And so I wanted to position and plant the seed because if, you, if you've ever made a deal before, if you ever made a big time deal before, you know that you have to plant the seed first. You got to let that seed germinate and then you got to let that seed grow. But like every year when snow starts, I make a phone call to one, one of these owners and I say, Hey, how you doing? How's this year looking? Good. Okay, great. You still in it for another year? Yep. All right, sweet. Let's talk next year. Great. So this year I'm building the business. I'm going to build as much as I possibly can to put ourselves in a position to be ready for an acquisition. Striker Digital specializes in SEO services specifically for local service businesses. Bodie and Andy, the two co-founders, have helped me get Bear Claw Land Services to the number one search result on Google inside my state for my specific search term. If you want to learn more, visit strikerdigital.com. That's S-T-R-Y-K-E-R-Digital.com. Okay, let's talk about why you wouldn't do snow. Why is snow a crappy business? Bad hours, right? T to most people. I was up at 2.15 this morning anyway. Like that's when most of these snowplow guys get up. I'm an early morning riser. I would much rather work in the dark when most people are asleep anyway. So I think I was just destined to be a snowplow business owner. I like being up early. I like it when most people, like there's something about, and I think it comes from football. It's like the only way I got to anywhere that I did in playing football was just because like I was willing to get up earlier than most people. And I was willing to put in the work when most people were sleeping. And it's like, that's a very simple concept. If you want to get ahead in life or if you want to do something or be good at something, it's just like wake up early or stay up late, one of the two, and just be willing to work harder and longer than your competition. There's a piece of me that's like, I just, I freaking love that thought process. Like, man, when, when most of the world is sleeping, I'm up working. That's, that's like a weird personal thing for me, but it drives me. It motivates me, right? I love thinking about not to try to like say, oh, you know, one person is better than another person. It's, it's literally the personal challenge for me is like, can you do things that most people are not willing to do? And I like that. I like the challenging aspect of it. So if that's you, start a business, right? Or jump into something head first. But the reason I like that 
in regards to the snowplow business because most people don't want to wake up that early. Most people don't want to deal with 600 different customers, right? But if you can, it can be very lucrative. There's plenty of people who have built snow removal businesses, especially as an owner operator. I don't know if like private equity is maybe private equity. Maybe if you went and did a big roll up, it's like, okay, you went and built a snowplowing business across every mountain town in Colorado where it's going to snow or every mountain town in the Western United States. Like, of course, private equity would be, would be interested if you built a business big enough with the EBITDA large enough. I, I think they would. Uh, maybe for some of those you out there who are listening to this, like maybe you disagree. Who cares? I'm starting a business, right? I, I don't really care. My goal is not to sell this thing right now. Like maybe one of these days. My goal is to build the business. I think way too many people think about like the sale event way too early or like, I'm going to build this thing. I'm going to sell it. It's like, no, man, I'm having so much fun building this thing. Like we got a great team in place. We built a really good summer business. I think we're going to hit, like we'll, we'll wrap up the year, right? Just crossing the million mark on the summer side. So now I want to go build the winter side of the business to the seven figure mark, right? Why a million? I don't know. Like, it's just, it's just a number. It's just a target. Like I'm a goal oriented person, right? And those of you listening to this, you're probably a goal oriented person. Like it's not all about the money. Like if, if it was all about the money, trust me, I would be in, I would be selling real estate or in private equity or in finance. Like if it was all about the money for me, like that's what it would be. Some level of satisfaction of building something from nothing. Like that to me is incredibly satisfying. Like I specifically remember I was talking with my mother-in-law. She was here whenever we had, whenever I was building the business, I literally was like, we had just had our first kid and my mother-in-law was in town. She was like, I remember whenever you're like, like creating the logo and creating the website up super early. Like I can specifically remember the day she was talking about, we were in this little apartment down in Denver and I had identified this need up here in, in the mountains and I just went for it. Right. Like, and that's what I'm going to encourage you listeners to do. If you are wanting to start a business, like don't overthink it, just freaking go for it. That's all I'm saying. Like if you sit here and overthink it, like you can talk yourself out of anything. I could have talked myself out of not building a snow removal business very easily, very, very easily. Cause like we're going to travel to go see my wife's parents over Thanksgiving. And like, I've put that on the calendar event to our field crew. I've said like, Hey, I'm going to be out of town, but like I've made my, like I've made it very clear that I will be available if anything is needed on the back end or if anything, like if any, any help is needed, right? Like I will be available over Thanksgiving and the same will be true for Christmas. But you know what? Like I think with great reward comes sacrifice. And am I going to prioritize this over my family? No, I'm not, but I'm still going to like make myself available and do some things that is probably unideal in a lot of people's minds. Right. But I care a lot about building this thing. Like I, my name is on it. I've got other people's names on it as well. And like, we have a team and that to me is the satisfying piece. It's like, can we start something from nothing? And then can we build a team around it and go solve some problems and go generate some revenue and create some jobs for some people? And that's what we're doing right now. And that's what jacks me up about building a snow removal business. It's not about like, this is the best business model in the world. Right now, I'll tell you why we're building it. One, because we've got people on the team who want to work year round. So we're going to do our absolute best to provide that work to our crew year round. This episode is brought to you by Dialed In Bookkeeping. Ben and his team provide bookkeeping services, job costing reports, and accurate financial information for the home services industry. If you're looking to keep your books up to date, visit dialedinbookkeeping.com slash O-W-N-R-O-P-S. When you use this specific landing page, you'll get your first three months 50% off. Now let's jump into how did we go about building it? For me, it was very simple. We've got a team on the back end who we've been working with for the last couple of years on the marketing side. They're incredible. We just launch paid ads. That's, that's all we do. Like we run paid ads to get customers for the jobs that we want to do. We've done this with fire mitigation. We've done it with land clearing. We've done it with excavation. We've done it with driveway repair. We've done it with road grading. We kept two crews busy all year, just simply off running Facebook ads. I believe we had 52 leads this summer before we shut our ads off. And Josiah, our sales manager, booked up two crews worth from those leads. So to me, Snow is like a very simple acquisition process. You run an ad to a geo-targeted location. So you figure out what locations do you want to be plowing in? And for us, it was like, we need to optimize around accounts that we already had uh, coming in from last year or already had leads on, right? So we just optimized for a very specific area. We ran ads to those neighborhoods and it was very simple. It was like, 
Need snow removal? We're accepting new clients. Like I said, it's not like contractors are like banging down the doors to get into this industry. Competition or supply is low on contractors, right? And even the contractors who are in it, like aren't doing any sort of digital marketing. I can tell you that for a fact right now, we ran ads and our sales manager is calling the leads. Very simple, just like we do in the summer. We get the lead, call as soon as you can, book a site visit, go out there, meet the customer, shake their hand, take a video of the driveway, add the photos in Jobber, give the customer a price. We send them a quote, they sign the quote via Jobber, and then boom, once they sign, we send them a contract, we collect their payment information to put it on file, and then we're ready to roll. Now, I do have some more content that I've already created some videos on how to set up snow plowing jobs in Jobber. So if you are actually building a snow removal business and you want to use Jobber, reach out to me directly or uh, place in the comments below like Jobber help or um, how to set up Jobber, something like that. I have recorded Loom videos of this because I wanted to standardize a process. It's not, Jobber is like 95% there for a snow removal management business. I love Jobber. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big Jobber advocate. They still haven't sponsored yet. So if you guys are listening, like we would take a sponsorship because I talk about you guys almost in every episode. <laughs> we will get you guys as a sponsor. My sales manager from Bear Claw is joining me in December. And we're going after podcast sponsorships. Jobber, if you listen to this, you're top on the list. So we might as well just work a deal right now. No, but but in all reality, I do love Jobber. And I think it's, it's like it's a great Swiss Army knife. And it's applicable to many different service industries. Like we use it for our excavation business. We use it for land clearing, forestry. I know a ton of lawn service companies use it. Landscaping, landscaping is really good. Snow removal, like it is, it is good for snow removal. I didn't want to go get a snow specific software yet. Well, I wanted to try using Jobber to manage our snow removal business. And the reality is it's about 95% of the way there, but I've created a workaround and I actually reached out to Marlena from GNM Outdoor Services. She's been on the podcast. Uh, for those of you who haven't listened to that episode, they're doing about 5 million in between excavation, landscaping, and snow removal up in Minnesota. And she is a, a jobber, I'd call her like a jobber power user. She's incredible. So go back and listen to her episode. It's called like Office Operations 101. She goes through a bunch of different ways that they use jobber in their uh, website. But I texted her this weekend. I was like, hey, I'm building out snow removal. Cause, well, cause here's what happened. We had our first plow event on Saturday and I had everything set up what I thought like job set up and everything. Well, I get a text from Josh, my business partner. And he's like, Hey, Zach can't access any of his, his accounts on his app. So like basically the way that we had it set up is like, he is supposed to pull open his app and then mark the jobs as complete as he goes through his route. Well, long story short, like there, you have to do a little work around. So you can't just set the job and then assign the job to the user. You have to create the job as recurring. Then you have to mark a specific setting as like recurring as on an as needed basis. And then there are a couple other settings that I've created videos on. Um, so if you need that, let me know. But then you've got to go manually create visits on the days of snowplow. So that's what I was saying. Like over Thanksgiving, if we get, if we get plows, like my responsibility is around the back end. So like, I'm fully planning to be working. I've let the team know, like, I will be available. We'll be doing that. You have to manually create the visits on the day of the plow. So that creates a little bit of an op operational, like, inefficiency that, you, that you're going to have to think through, like, working through if you use Jobber for this. I would love to be able to just, like, create, create the way where the user or the driver or the snowplow operator could, like, click on their app. Like, after they had a route built for them, they could click, like, snow day right and then it's like automatically populates the visits of their route but that's not the case you have to manually go in on the back end i had to manually go on the back end you got to go to schedule you got to create new visits and you got to like select all the visits that you want to create visits for and then you got to like enter it the second piece where it's not ideal zach our snowplow operator cannot mark a visit as incomplete so the other thing i like about jobber is that like you can tally the completed visits to go towards uh, end of month invoice for the client associated with their account and jobber, but there's no way to mark the job as incomplete. It's like, oh, we're so close to being a snow removal software, but like we need to be able to mark that as incomplete. And the reason being is because like, I want the guys to take a photo if we have a no plow day. So for example, two of our accounts were already shoveled, right? But a month from now, when that customer reaches out to me and they're like, hey, why didn't you guys plow on November 9th? Like my neighbors got it. I want to be able to have documentation of that. I want to go back and look in their account and be like, oh, Zach took a picture of the account 
and it was already shoveled and he has the notes in here, that's a much easier conversation, right? Or how about this one? Three cars parked in the driveway. Hey, why didn't you guys plow? Well, in my notes, when, my, when our driver showed up, you know, you've got three cars parked and that allows me to have a conversation with the customer. Whereas right now we have to go in and delete the visit inside Jobber so that it doesn't get tallied towards monthly invoice, but then it deletes all the notes and the photos as well. So Jobber, if you listen to this, like, come on, let's get this hundred percent of the way there. There's some feedback for you. Anyways, that was a rant about Jobber. Uh, if you want help with setting that up, put in the comments below. Jobber help, happy to send you those Loom videos. I've already recorded those. If you haven't signed up for the weekly newsletter yet, go to ownerops.com slash newsletter. That's O-W-N-R-O-P-S dot com slash newsletter. We summarize all of the learning lessons from the interviews with the guests on the podcast, and we distill those into short, actionable tips, tricks, tactics, and strategies that you can use to grow your own local service business. Sign up for the newsletter at ownerops.com. That's O-W-N-R-O-P-S dot com. Here we are, snow removal. We had three snows last week over, I have, we had like one six inch snow. We had a couple five inch snows. One of the exciting pieces about the business is we got, we landed a property management company. So that brought on 105 properties to be shoveled. I love this business model because it's just an hourly TNM rate. So we are just billing hourly for everybody who is out there shoveling. And I, I love it. It's just like, you know, you got your labor costs. You don't have any like huge major equipment costs and then you bill a certain rate and you pay your labor a certain rate and it's a very simple business model and so i'm very bullish on the fact that this is going to be a good thing for us especially when you land volume at the beginning so thought process on that we have subcontracted crews that uh, you know i've built relationships with through building the summer side of the business we tap into labor from subcontractors on an as needed basis whenever we get uh, on a project that requires more labor we built a good relationship with some of them and so i just went to them and said hey if i go land these uh shovel accounts like you guys you guys want winter time work and it was yeah absolutely uh they do construction stuff in the winter so like up here in the snow it's not super ideal to be hanging siding on the side of the house in the middle of a snowstorm so gives them wintertime work, it gives us some revenue, and it's a win-win all the way around for both of us. And it's also a win-win-win because the property managers, one of the biggest pains is like finding the labor to shovel walkways for vacation rentals. I mean, think about it. It's like you live in a, or you have a vacation rental in a highly trafficked wintertime area because we live in a ski town, right? Like those guests need access to the door. They need access to the hot tub. They need access to the grill, those types of things. So we're really just shoveling like front walkways, back patios, things like that. And we just track our time on each of those. And uh, we submit our time cards to the property management. So that has created some like operational tasks on the back end, but it's a very straightforward, simple business model. So I would encourage you if you are in a snowy area and you are in a vacation rental spot, go reach out to property management companies, put a bid together to go do snow shoveling. It's a very simple business model and a way to generate revenue. So those are our two strategies. It's like we're doing residential plow snow shoveling. You can pick up the phone, call the property managers, and you can get residential accounts by running simple Facebook ads. If you need help with Facebook ads, reach out to us. We do this all the time. We do it for other people as well. Check out landservicemarketers.com. Yeah, we're specializing in running Facebook ads for anybody in land clearing, forestry, dirt, excavation, grading. And then the wintertime, if you want snow leads, like it's working for us, I know it can work for you. It's very simple and straightforward. Yeah, so go reach out, landservicemarketers.com. Make sure you get in touch with Josh. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. If you are thinking about starting your business, and it's a burning desire inside of you like nobody's gonna have the answer it's got to come from you just start just start don't overanalyze you can talk yourself out of it in a million different ways um, i'll report back maybe i'll do another episode like halfway through the season let you know where we're at most excited thing i've got is uh we just got a plow on my truck josh was kind enough to hook up the wiring on that so i'm excited i asked josiah to go sell another 50 because i'm ready to ready to go plow uh kind of tired to sit behind the computer to be honest um it's not all what it's cracked up to be i love being in the field i love operating the equipment so i need a little bit of change of pace and i secretly hope that we go sell more accounts than our first operator can handle 
because that'll mean I just got to put the plow on and go owner operator style and uh, get back in the game. But that's what you got to do building the business. Uh, some of you out there who are private equity or finance guys, more seasoned entrepreneurs probably disagree with me on that, but it's my style. It's how I like doing it. And um, yeah, I'll report back halfway. Hopefully you guys will see some photos or videos on YouTube of, of some plowing. Anyways, yeah, go check out I'm doing like shameless plugs here. Go check out the Bear Claw Land Services YouTube. We did a bunch of YouTube videos this summer from our forestry and dirt side of things. And I fully plan to implement something on the snow side. I do want to get some videos of Josh on the grader because he's got a sweet snow plow route with his grader for managing HOA roads. That's the side of the business that I do want to grow is going, going and finding more HOA roads that only a grader is suited for, a grader or a loader, because not everybody can do that, right? Most people can go, I guess I should say more people can go buy a truck and buy a plow and then offer residential plowing, but not everybody's going to go buy a road grader. So since we have access to that, that's another avenue that I'm looking to grow. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this one up here. Thanks again for listening, you guys, and we'll see you in the next episode. Don't forget, work hard, do your best, never settle for less. Yeah.